Hello everybody, welcome into the gardens for a long overdue video. I've got a lot of things I need to share with you, so we're not going to be spending much time looking at the actual gardens on this Sunday visit. But uh, I will show you what's left and uh, explain why we're in this situation. Alright, it is fantastic to see all of you again. And uh, I'll get back to putting more videos up pretty soon. A couple weeks of confusion first, but yeah, it'll all make sense really, really soon. Let's start with looking at the aquaponics. The frankenponic system has been gutted and is basically just a no power system at the moment. I'm going to do a little video uh, in the very near future about no power aquaponics and uh, you know is there any point things like that. I think ultimately there is. This is going to be the easiest part of things this whole no power aquaponic garden. But like I said that'll all make sense soon enough. Got a big gray tote in the back there full of clay pebbles and pellets and keeping some bacteria nice and safe for me oh yeah all right we'll scan a little bit over here we've still got that tangerine dream it's got lots of peppers forming on it but uh, nobody's taken any color yet I was quite intrigued to find uh, John of growing your greens spoke quite highly of these peppers so I would really like to see one of them ripen up. I got the impression they are a sweeter pepper, but I don't mind sweet peppers. I just really, 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 really like hot peppers. That's all. Got one of the three habanero plants. This is, considering it's, it's in a one gallon pot, I'm going to say it's doing fairly well. Um, it's, it's a joke compared to the one that's in the house, and you'll see that on the uh, profile for the orange habaneros, but still a beautiful looking plant. Nice and productive. I love a productive plant. A couple of orange crimson and some mini bells that never really made it anywhere. The last of the outdoor part of the pepper shrine. I've got a few plants inside. Can't really see them at the moment because the room they're in is all full of stuff. But here's another one of the orange habanero plants that I've got on the grow. This one again, once it gets to the top, it's just so insanely productive. But it takes a while to get going. Not quite as good in this container as it is over in the one gallon and nowhere near as good in the one gallon as it is in the three, so habaneros like room to spread their roots. Alright, we've got the Malabar spinach. Doing much better now that it's getting more sunlight without the tomato in its way. <laughs> that last elderberry cutting. Do you see that dude? That thing is huge spread out. I'm going to try and put that into a bucket because I can't leave it in the, the system with what I'm about to do, but oh, there's that fig cutting wilting a little bit today because I pulled it up to check on its roots, so I probably pulled some off but it's starting to get a good little root ball on it probably going to transplant that into one of those self-wicking totes here we've got those peppers and more peppers and more peppers and more peppers there's a few ripe ones on there, but not enough for me. And I've still got a few cucumbers going over here, a couple at least. So, that's interesting. Here is pretty much what remains of my little pepper forest. A lot of plants that have gone into the compost lately have given a few away. You know, it's always better to find new homes for, for your little garden friends than it is to compost them, if you can mystery squash that appeared in the compost I was using to plant things in did in fact eventually climb up the sunflower and keep climbing and keep climbing and then it started to produce this. Anybody know what this is? Because I don't. So many types of things have, have gone into this compost. I, I, I really don't know. Is that the beginning of a spaghetti squash? Is that the beginning of a honeydew? I'm not going to be able to find out, unfortunately, but would love to hear your feedback on it. We did eventually have to top this sunflower because it was getting just crazy tall and blowing around in the wind. Back here behind it, though, there's that tote with 24 peppers in it. The younger of my boys, I think, is going to be taking that to start his indoor pepper garden. That's got to make you proud. And what's left of the gnome garden? Not much here. Those little elderberries are doing alright. A few carrots. Last indigo rose tomato. A couple of beautiful St. Thomas Bain peppers over there. 
But let's let's talk about why there's not much growing on in my garden right now because it's only September after all. I don't know how many of you have seen that uh, classic John Cleese rat race, um, but there is an expression in that that kind of suits our situation quite well. You know, good things take time, great things happen all at once. We are in the middle of a great thing happening. Basically, we've got the opportunity to move halfway across the country and have our living expenses cut to almost nothing. Uh, it's just going to be a couple of bills every month, and the the rent slash mortgage portion of the thing is it's a joke. It's a joke. We're going to be moving on to just over half an acre in Manitoba. So this is going to give me a lot of opportunities to uh, try new things and to really truly garden in the Canadian winters. Now, huh, doing it here in Penticton is one thing, okay? It's not, it's, it's, it's the tip of the California desert here, even though it's Canada. It's, it's, it's hardly Canada. So going back to Manitoba, I am originally from Winnipeg, actually. I was born out there, but... Uh, Going back there after all of these years is going to be really, really interesting to take this gardening knowledge that I've got and build a brand new greenhouse and most of a brand new system. Well, yeah, most of one. One of the benefits of a no power aquaponic garden, moving this is going to be a joke. I put them in a tote, put the tote in the truck, and <laughs> they're good to go. Some of these plants already go two days without getting watered. They won't even notice. Moving all of this on the other hand, is really going to be an adventure. I have a few ideas and um, I want to run them by my friend at the nursery because it's a long way to move fish, but uh, if any of you fine viewers have any thoughts on how you would move, oh, probably near 40 very large goldfish, 2,000 or so kilometers, roughly 1,250 miles. I would love to hear your thoughts on this because it is going to be one heck of an adventure. And this has taken me a long time to dial in and set up to grow things as well as it does. I mean really, look at those Tabasco plants, they're flipping huge. So I want to take the fish, I want to take as much of this system as I can. I will make a video of trying to move the aquaponics halfway across Canada. So you guys can, you know, see what I'm going through with all of that. But, it's going to be interesting. So yeah, right now videos are kind of sporadic. I'm, my pepper shrine is shrinking fast. Anything I've got seeds for, I'm composting, unfortunately. And i got to tell you, that is breaking my heart. <sighs> and unfortunately, some things I don't have seeds for are composting. The last Carolina Reaper died. It got too cold and just wilted. That was all there was to it. So that's toast. But uh, I'm thinking maybe that young fig will go into that wicking container that I had that in and I'll try again. You can always order seeds online and uh, when I get the new mailing address out there I'm sure maybe somebody's got some spare seeds somewhere. Alright, uh, with much love to you guys and much love to this greenhouse that I will soon be departing from, I am going to wrap up this particular video Thank you guys so much for uh, sticking with me through all of this. And once we get settled in Manitoba, things are going to get really, really interesting. All right. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend, everybody.